So my cousin, he called me one day and we got on discussion of my videos because he really liked it and he just discovered it. And what he wanted me to do one day was to cover somebody named Murdoch. And I was asking, uh, who is this guy? Uh, is he a rapper or something like that? He was like, no, um, like do your research, type it in and you'll see everything that you know about him. So before I start off anything, I want to give a shout out to my cousin because without him, I probably wouldn't know any of this stuff. Now, James Murdoch Ferguson, he was one of 15 children burn, born to Vivian Kennedy Ferguson. Uh, all of them were raised in Hitch Village. That's the projects. If you haven't seen a video that I did about Hitch Village, go check it out. I'll show you the whole landscape of Hitch Village. Um, and his father, James Ferguson Sr., nicknamed him Murdoch after a character in the 1980s TV show, The A-Team. A lot of you guys remember that. Now, in 1998, he led the Savannah High School basketball team to their first championship in more than 20 years. He was a point guard for that basketball team, and he was also elected as the Savannah Morning News Player of the Year in basketball that year. So, and another thing that was noted about him on the court, he was the, uh, the point guard for the team, but in this video that I'll show you guys, hopefully I won't get copyrighted for it. But in this video, I believe it's some of the old coaches that was talking and some of the old team members of that team that was talking about Murdoch. And they were just saying that he was a team player. Like, he he knew when to score and also he knew when to get his players involved. And that was saying that, that what made him a great basketball player and pretty much a leader on the court. Mm. After his graduation in 1998 from Savannah High School, he entered Atlanta Metropolitan College on a basketball scholarship, but later, when school didn't work out, he moved back to Savannah and enrolled to Savannah Technical College. That's the college on White Bluff. A lot of people attend that. Um, also, in the year 2000, he met uh, Tynesha Humans, uh, a, a daughter of, the, of a Southside business owner. Um, they had a kid together, and they was also planning to, to marry each other. Now, it's also noted that Murdoch was a member of the Hitch Village gang that included friends like Jason Camouflage Johnson. Uh, if you don't know who that is, please look at my ver my first video. And also, James Nathan Johnson. You're going to remember that name a little bit later on. Uh, Camouflage, a Savannah rapper, was killed in 2003 while walking his toddler son that was like right outside the the uh, pure pain record studio um now this is what his mother said vivian when murdoch was growing up he was a good kid because i kept him in church but then he stopped going he made bad choices when he was older being in the streets now murdoch's ties to the streets worried his mother and it was for really a good reason because Vivian, she experienced losses with her family as well. Uh, she lost one of her sons by the name of Tony Kennedy. He was only 26 when he was killed. That's also Murdoch's older brother. And he got killed in 1988 uh, after when he was just finished serving four years in the U.S. Army. Several days after returning home, he was shot and killed in Hitch Village. Now, that's his t this is Tony, Ke uh, Tony Kennedy. This is Murdoch's oldest brother uh, he was first arrested on, in 1998 on charges of possession of alcohol by a minor and over the next few years that's when he had more brushes in with the law uh, he was arrested 20 times on charges ranging from trespassing gambling to marijuana and cocaine possession according to Chatham County jail records uh, also in the year 2000 James Murdoch Ferguson was arrested with camouflage in the shooting death of Kenneth Capers. Kenneth Capers was a 17-year-old that it was that Chatham County Police really assumed that camouflage was the killer of Kenneth Capers, but there wasn't enough proof. I don't know if I talked about that enough in my camouflage video, but yeah, that was also a thing. And the murder charges was dropped for both of them, but Murdoch was later convicted of cocaine possession and also he went to serve three years in well three separate prison sentences the last stretch for possession of firearm by a convicted felon he was released in prison in 2005 and he vowed to give get his life back together 
That's what his girlfriend Yuman said. Uh, they he also was planning to marry her and start their own business. Now I want to talk about his death on January the second, on two thousand seven. Murdoch Ferguson, James Nathan Johnson, and some friends gathered ga gathered at a home on a forty two hundred block of Guatemala Street. That's on the east side. Uh, when they say they were there to pay respects to Johnson's aunt who had just lost a son. Um, the detectives believe that the men were in front of the house when gunfire erupted. Um, there was witnesses that were on the scene. Well, not really witnesses to the actual gunfight, but actually heard the shots being fired. Um, they said it was at least about 20, they heard at least 20 rounds go off. And in the process, uh, Murdoch Ferguson was murdered. Also in the process, James Nathan Johnson was also injured and another, somebody else that was injured as well was Harold Riley Jr. Um, they all was transported and like I said, Ferguson was the only one that died. Um, Harold Riley Jr. had a gun and he also had a parole monitoring device on his ankle. Uh, Ferguson also had a gun as well, but he died at the hospital. Um, he actually got shot in the head and his mother Vivian Ferguson said when I heard he got shot in the head I knew he trusted the wrong person I know he put too much trust in them also James Nathan Johnson was charged with the murder of Murdoch but it was later let go in March because it just wasn't enough evidence to prove that he murdered him and also two other men, Tion Spencer and Aaron Michael Davis, uh, was at the scene, but they fled. Um, Aaron Michael Davis was just arrested on drug charges. Um, he he was an uh, interest uh, in the murder, but he wasn't. They didn't suspect him of actually murdering. Actually, they caught him, I believe, with like sixteen or nineteen bags of coke. I believe he was just in the in the car when it all happened, and during. And the aftermath of his shooting, uh, Tion Spencer, who was 21, was gunned down February 22nd at Price and 39 Streets as a result as a result of Ferguson's death. And Spencer kind of followed the same footsteps as Murdoch. I mean, he was wanted on outstanding warrants in the Ferguson ho homicide and the separate shooting on December 30th. So he was already involved with some other elements and another stat that was brought up in the 2000 year uh, jail records show that 81 percent of the homicide suspect last year and so far this year have arrest records among the victims 56 percent have arrest records uh also spencer uh about that shooting as well uh a 78 year old woman was also shot just by a straight bullet just from sitting on a porch that afternoon and, i mean it was broad daylight when uh, Spencer had got shot, like I said, that was retaliation for Murdoch being killed. Now, all of this did spark a investigation. Also, it was called Operation Raging Waters. And this operation focused on different uh, gangs. It focused on the Gwinnett Street Posse, the Hitch Village Posse, and the Waters Avenue crew. And by the way, uh, they might not be named this same stuff. Um, sometimes how Savannah Chatham Metro Police groups people, they group them like as like the street or like Gwinnett Street or Waters Avenue. Those both both of those are streets in Savannah. I'm trying to break this down for people that's not in Savannah. So a lot of times, like even with doing this, I'm pretty sure somebody gonna say, "Oh, well, they're not called Waters." Avenue crew anymore they call Waters Avenue something else so I'm just giving you information that I've seen on here that's actual evidence that's like factual now the Raging Waters operation uh, their first raid was at the Fred Russell's public housing apartments on February 23rd like I said I got a video on that as well if you want to see how that looks like I got a video of that in my video playlist um, on February 23rd uh, officer seized two guns, nearly a pound of marijuana, and 50 grams of cocaine. 
Three men, including Murdoch's 21-year-old brother, Michael Ferguson, was arrested. On February 28th, police went to a house on Gwinnett Street and seized six guns, marijuana, and ecstasy. Four people went to jail. Three of those suspects later were charged with the shooting death of Tion Spencer, who was killed at 39th and Price Streets in the middle of the afternoon. Tion Spencer was the guy involved in killing Murdoch. And... Also, Michael Ferguson is a convicted felon, and I believe he's doing 11 years uh, so far because he was caught in 2007. So I believe he's he's still doing an 11-year term. And also, what to note about the Ferguson family, it's a big family. They have about six sisters and eight brothers. So um, there's a lot of Fergusons in this, now I'm about to name. A uh, police also was seeking another brother Daryl Ferguson, that was 24, on a warrant for kidnapping. Uh, police say Daryl was a convicted felon and kidnapped his daughter from a daycare facility on his probation. Uh, also, on March the 14th, police arrested one of the Fergusons on charges of drug possession. He They seized a gun and marijuana from Samson Ferguson, who was 20 at the time. After when he got into a fight outside of Hitch Village apartment, that was on fire. Um, also, like I said, the, the Ferguson family is a big family. So, um, in this article that I'm reading, Emmy Ferguson is also saying some things about her younger brothers, and she, her her youngest brother, her younger brothers, they didn't want she she don't want them following the same footsteps as all her other brothers have, and. A lot of it is the blame for the environment. Um, that's what she was saying. Uh, what you do, the choices you make, some people rush their deaths because of the choices they make in life, she said. Uh, Murdoch's got cut off young. We can only try to live better and hope nobody else get cut off young. Uh, she knows her brother Murdoch made some poor, poor choices, but she said that doesn't make, that doesn't mean he didn't leave a positive impact on the community. And also, two weeks after burying her son, uh, Vivian Ferguson, when she buried Murdoch, she was at the hospital visiting Jordan Meningo, her cousin. And Meningo was 19. He was shot on January the 27th in Hitch Village during an argument over money. He wasn't killed, but he was paralyzed. And I believe they caught the guy that did the shooting, Thomas Earl Brown. Um, their family was really troubled by a lot of violence and also he left two kids behind um, at the time when he died he, he had a four-year-old daughter and during the time that he died he had a baby on the way Samaje that was due in September and also let me talk about James Nathan Johnson the guy that was involved with Murdoch's murder. He was arrested November the 8th, 2000, well, excuse me, November the 9th, 2007, when he rolled his Jeep Cherokee inside of a Ghanish food mart in East Savannah that was on the, that was on Waters Avenue. Now, police are saying that it was a drug deal gone wrong, that initially one of the people that he was trying to make a transaction with Bertram Martin, he was arrested. Initially, uh, Martin, the driver of the SUV, initially told police he was getting robbed by Johnson, the passenger, just before the vehicle ran into the store front. But police later learned that the two were doing some business as the SUV was traveling. And however, the deal turned into a disagreement that led to a physical altercation. Uh, the, con the confrontation led to the Jeep crashing into the store. Um, police found a lot of dope. They found a, a estimate of 30 pounds of marijuana and found $4,000 in cash. Well, this is where it jumps. It, now they're saying $4,000 in cash and the later report said $8,000 in cash. So I guess I go with the $8,000. Now that week for Savannah Metro Chatham Narcotics team, that was a, I guess that was a good week for them because I believe they got a lot of dope off the streets. I believe they had a, another unrelated drug bust that netted up the $30,000 worth of dope being took off the streets. And another thing I want to say about this is, even though this, this guy was a noble person, he 
had a lot of accomplishments with Savannah High School. Uh, I mean, he was a star player in high school, but at the same time, when you get out of high school, a lot of people in high school, they transition on the other things. You know, they're not that same 18-year-old teenager no more. They're that uh, 27, 28, 29-year-old kid, or well, 29-year-old man that's dealing with life. And a lot of people who, hell, even a lot of people that graduate high school, that graduate, some people are still in Savannah. Not saying that they ain't making no moves in life, but um, being in the city sometimes can be troubling because getting in trouble is pretty easy. And I'm glad I, I got this story. I'm glad my, my cousin told me about this because I have another story just like this that I'm going to try to do this weekend. Well, not exactly just like this, but it's involving another Savannah star that was murdered recently. And it's just to show you that you can you can do good things in life, but you gotta stay on the right track on on the right track because he had a scholarship. I mean, he was a, a good baller. That's what what some of the coaches were saying. I mean, he could have furthered his life. He didn't. He couldn't. He didn't even have to be in the streets anymore, but sometimes that street, the street life is so overpowering that a lot of people just, they just want to stick to it because that's what they know. And being that you was raised in Hitch Village Projects, I mean, that's, that's a crime area to begin with. And not only that, but it shows you that a lot of people that you have in your circle can't be trusted. You know, you can't. Uh, hang around certain places at certain times like I said in one of my Savannah for Dummies episodes There's there's some places in Savannah. I wouldn't be caught without a gun, you know, so um, RP the him I mean like I said, I'm a 90s baby So when he won that scholarship well, when he won that championship, I was Six years old. I was born in 92. So a lot of this stuff. I didn't know about so I just glad I just put this together for you guys but that's all I have for today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. But it's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and I'm out.